Hello, welcome to our second video of our series of six videos, uh, during which we're looking at the uh, accounts of the risen Jesus in Eastertide. Uh, what a wonderful thing to spend time meditating upon. So today we're going to be meditating on the story of the road to Emmaus, two disciples walk from Jerusalem to Emmaus and they meet the risen Jesus on that walk. Um, before we, we do that, and I'll lead you through that a little bit later, we're going to have a, a time of quiet and stillness. Um, and just to say a little bit about imaginative prayer, which is the style of meditation we're using today, Imaginative prayer is a wonderful technique to use because it takes you deep into the story of a uh, story that we're reading and it's a story where Jesus is and so we can imagine ourselves in that place as one of the disciples and we're going to encounter Jesus and uh, be very attentive to the feelings that arise in us and um, what those feelings point to for us and for the deepening of our relationship with a God who loves us and Christ who is always with us. So we'll start with our quiet quietness. Hello from me too. Um, this next short passage is uh, for the silence, the stilling. It's just a way of helping us to prepare to gather ourselves in order to pray. Um, so it's a good idea to get yourself comfortable, perhaps put your feet flat on the ground so that you're grounded and your hands where they're relaxed on your lap, on your knees, perhaps your palms upwards so that you're receptive to what the Spirit will be teaching you in this time of prayer. Now I'm going to uh, read a passage from Psalm 139, and then there'll be a gong sound, and then we'll have about a minute's worth of silence and stillness, and uh, then the gong will signal the end of that minute, and we'll finish by saying the words uh, of the glory be to the Father together. Uh, glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. We'll say those together to bring this short, stilling exercise to an end. When you are quiet and still, says God, I can speak to your heart. So, we'll sit quietly knowing that God is here with us. Lord, you search me and know me. You know if I am standing or sitting. You read my thoughts. Whether I walk or lie down, you are watching me. You know everything about me. If I climb the heavens, you are there. There too, if I lie in the depths. If I flew to the point of sunrise or west across the sea, your hand would still be guiding me, your right hand holding me.
shall we say together. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Thank you, John. So our passage today is the road to Emmaus, and it, it comes straight after um, the day when the women have been to the tomb. They found it empty. They found the angels there, telling them that Jesus is alive and has risen, and they are amazed. Peter also goes to the tomb and uh, discovers the linen cloths, and that Jesus is, is, is risen. And they run back to all the disciples and tell them what they've discovered. And uh, they are absolutely amazed, of course. And so there's, there's, we meet the two of the disciples walking from Jerusalem that evening to Emmaus. So I'm going to read from... Uh, the Bible, the passage, and then after that we will meditate by entering into it imaginatively together. So the reading is from Luke 24, verses 13 to 35. Now that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking with each other about everything that had happened. As they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them. But they were kept from recognising him. He asked them, what are you discussing together as you walk along? They stood still, their faces downcast. One of them, named Cleopas, asked him, are you the only one visiting Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened there these days? What things, he asked. About Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. He was a prophet, powerful in word and deed before God and all the people. The chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death, and they crucified him. But we had hoped he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. And what is more, it is the third day since all this took place. In addition, some of our women amazed us. They went to the tomb early this morning, but didn't find his body. They came and told us that they had seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. Then some of our companions went to the tomb and found it, just as the women had said, but they did not see Jesus. He said to them, How foolish you are, and how slow to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Did not the Messiah have to suffer these things and then enter his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. As they approached the village to which they were going, Jesus continued on as if he was going further. But they urged him strongly, stay with us, for it is an early evening. The day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and began to give it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognised him, and he disappeared from their sight. Then they asked each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us? They got up and returned at once to Jerusalem. There they found the eleven and those with them assembled together and saying, It is true, the Lord has risen and has appeared to Simon. Then the two told what had happened on the way and how Jesus was recognised by them when he broke the bread. And so uh, we begin by asking all that we are and all that we think and feel is directed to God. We share together in a meditation of this passage. We quietly imagine the scene. 
is towards the end of the day. And so much has been happening for the two disciples. Perhaps you'd like to imagine that you are one of those disciples. You are walking with your companion in the evening and it's quite a long walk all the way from Jerusalem to your village. And as the dusk begins, you're able to share with your companion all that's on your heart. You're puzzled and in the passage it tells us that their faces were downcast. You're trying to figure out all that's been happening. take a little time to just wonder what it feels like to be able to talk so closely with someone who listens attentively to you as you walk side by side in the evening and your hearts are downcast and as you walk somebody joins you It is Jesus who joins you, but you're so wrapped up in all that's been happening in your life, you don't recognise his presence straight away. And as you walk, you talk to this, the person who's, who's joined you. And he asks you, why are you, what are you discussing? And you can't believe he doesn't understand. And he asks you to tell you what it is. He asks you to tell him what's troubling you. What are you able to tell Jesus? You know that Jesus, this person, is listening in a deeper and more fuller way than anybody else has ever listened to you. And you tell him what's on your heart. Tell him how you, your sadness at all that had happened to your group of followers, your friends, the followers of Jesus. And when you've finished telling him everything, Jesus begins to explain and tease it all out and pull it out and unravel it and untangle it for you. How do you feel as you realise How many preoccupations you have? And all along, Jesus is walking beside you. And Jesus explains your situation. by talking and explaining all that is spoken about in the Bible and the prophets. Opening, opening wide your 
Just now that this back to it. And this shows you how you can be liberated from these. How does it feel to hear Jesus? What can you hear? As Jesus speaks to you, to your heart. And so as they, as you approach the village, it seems as if this person is going to carry on further, perhaps to the next village, you know it's late, and it's a, it's a good seven miles, you've just walked, you're hungry and tired. You invite this person into the heart of your place. Come in, stay with us. They cry, stay with us. It's dark. Now the day is nearly over. So he comes in and stays with you. And you eat. And as you share food, Jesus breaks the bread and gives it to you. And it's then in this most ordinary, human, everyday things we must do, just to eat, we find we can see Jesus. Your eyes are opened. And you say, was not my heart burning within me? whilst he was talking. What do you say to your friend? How do you feel? Then you decide, even though you've already walked seven miles in the evening and there's been so much going on in your life, but you decide you're going to go back to Jerusalem straight away. It's already dark. You're going back through the darkness to, to Jerusalem to tell everyone what's happened. As your heart is burning within you with this love and joy you've experienced, or that you long to experience with Jesus. See how you long to tell the others. What is Jesus telling you? How is God speaking to you? Encouraging you to spread the good news of the risen Christ found in conversation, in breaking of bread, in the beauty and the wonder of everybody around you and of all things. So we bring our time of meditation to a close by joining together in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. As it is in heaven, give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory. Thank you for joining us today uh, in this video. There'll be another one next week and another passage to enter into. Um, and if you're able to join us tomorrow evening, Wednesday at seven o'clock, then we meet on Zoom as a prayer group um, and we'll be following this same meditation on the road to Emmaus. So please do join us if you're able. I um, know how to... Uh, contact Zoom. Uh, if you need to uh, be reminded of the meeting ID and how to contact us on Zoom, then do do ring me or drop me an email or do the same for John Sutton, who uh, who is our parish administrator, um, and the details of uh, how to join that meeting we'll we'll make available if you haven't already had them on an email. Um, and this evening, Tuesday evening, we're having another Tuesday evening prayer. Um, this evening is going to be a, uh, a kind of mix of Iona prayer and Stations of the Resurrection. So we'll be following three Stations of the Resurrection uh, and we'll be keeping that pattern going for the next five Tuesday evenings. And again, that's at seven o'clock on Zoom and on Facebook Live. Please do join us if you can. Uh, and until then, God bless you. Thank you. Have a good day. Bye. Bye-bye.